Running out of water or using a contaminated water source is going to bring your overland journey to a screeching halt. Stay tuned for my top 10 ways to avoid this problem. Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome to Nomad Overlanding. My name is Ben and thank you for being here today. So, a problem. Oh my God, we have a problem. We are running out of water or we don't have enough. How do we resolve that before we ever get to the problem in the first place? Number one, make sure we bring enough water on the trip in the first place. It kind of sounds logical, right? Okay, so the standard rule is four liters of water per day per person in your team. That will include water for uh, hygiene, it will include water for dishes and drinking. Number two, invest in a high quality filtration system. This is not something to go on the cheap. <laughs> I've used cheap ones and I had the stomach problems to, it was unpleasant. A couple of companies you could use something like Water Straw or Catadyne is a, is a pretty popular, common, long-lived company. Number three, plan your route around water sources. Now, we talked about this in a, in a previous video, which I will link at the end of this one so you can watch it, um, to plan your trip around certain things like campsites and water sources. So what you can do is if you know you're going into an area and there's streams or rivers or lakes or ponds, whatever, that are around you or within a vicinity of you, make sure to take a little detour around to those water spots because you can fill up your water, you can go for a swim, whatever, and that might allow you the opportunity to bottle less water but have water available to you. Number four, use hydration packs, okay? Things like platypus. Now, these are things that when you are not in your vehicle, uh, maybe you want to have a water pack on your back all the time just to keep hydrating as a reminder. Number five, number five, set up rainwater collection. Now, this is an interesting thing because if you are going out and you know that there's going to be a day where you have rain, set your tarp or your awning or something to capture the rain that's coming down. Now, how would you do this? Well, your awnings are on two posts. Well, if you drop one post down, that corner actually tilts down toward the ground. And guess what? The material will kind of bend in the center and the water will flow down that little gully and fill up your pot or a, a water jug or something on the ground. So this gives you the ability to collect natural water without having a main water source, but it is something to, uh, to keep in mind. Number six, store water in multiple containers. So this sounds kind of self-explanatory, but it kind of goes to the old adage, don't put all your eggs in one basket. What happens if you have one nice, big, lovely water pack and it gets a hole in it? You are out of luck, my friend. I'm sorry, but that's the case. So um, what you can do is instead of taking one 10 liter, let's say, oh, let's use gallons, uh, instead of taking one 10-gallon water jug, you take five 2-gallon uh, water jugs. And that way it spreads things around. So if one goes bad, at least you've got four backup. Number seven. Number seven. Carry a water testing kit. A water testing kit is a little vial. You fill up the water and you put a strip inside that tests the pH balance of the water. Now, not all water is created equal because is it running? Is it set stagnant? Has it been pooling for a while? Well, that's going to change the microbes and the pH of the water. So if you have that little strip, it can the strip will tell you if the water source is generally clean. 
Now, it doesn't mean you drink fresh right out of the water source because that could lead to a whole host of other issues that we're talking about today, but it will at least give you a sense of the science of the water before you start drinking. Number eight, this one makes sense, practice water conservation. You do have a limited amount of water until your next rotation through a water source. So don't use up all the water at once. Save it, right? It, yeah, it's, an, it's kind of a no-brainer, right? But I'm not, I don't even need to explain. You know what water conservation is, so use it. Okay, number nine, boil water when in doubt. Oh man, boiling water. Yeah, this is an oldie but a goodie and it still works and it doesn't cost you a darn thing. You've tested the water, the pH balance is okay. You take the water from the stream and you put it into a pot and you boil the water. Standard rule of thumb, thumb from CDC is if you are under 6,500 feet elevation, you want to bring the water to a rolling boil for one minute. That should get rid of all the yummies and goodies in the water that might create problems in your intestinal system. Now, if you are above 6,500 feet, the CDC recommends that you boil water, rolling boil, for three minutes. Now, I didn't really go into why that's the case, but if you happen to know, put a comment down below because I'd really like to know. Okay, number 10, stay prepared for the unexpected. That's kind of the mantra for overlanding, isn't it? We prepare for things to go wrong so that we still have a good time. Now, if we're talking about water, let's say you're doing something and your lovely $300 Catadyne rolls down a mountain and crashes and breaks at the bottom of it. You are messed up now because you are out of filtered water. But wait, no you're not because you happen to bring water tablets for you. Ta-da, back up. So you have the water tablets, bloop, in the water and 20 minutes later you're good to go. So that sort of thing. Or um, you packed a life straw and it's in your glove box. Great, now I can drink the water without feeling like I'm going to puke. <laughs> I know that sounds bad, but that's exactly what will happen or worse. Okay, that's it. My name is Ben for Nomad Overlanding. Thank you so much for being here. And by the way, check out this next video.